Hi and welcome to video number five. We're going to talk about setting up your website. In videos one through four, we talked about mainly you know planning, meeting up with clients, and things like that. All that was to prepare you for video number five. Video number five is the easiest part because it's all about setting up your website. It may sound a little difficult and technical, but I guarantee you, follow me step by step, and it'll all be easy. First, what I want to do is show you the steps that we're going to take, that you will need to take. And then I will show you exactly where to go, which websites to use, how to use them, and things like that. So the first thing we need to do is get web hosting. Second thing is to get a domain name. And then point the domain name to the web hosting server. And it'll all make sense. The first, these first few parts are just to get it ready so that you can start making the website. Once it's ready, then we can set up your WordPress site. Then once you set up your WordPress site, you can find a theme that fits a site, not an ugly blog. So what I mean by that is finding a, a theme. A theme is basically a professional made template that you can customize fairly easily. So what we're going to do is find a website because as you know, WordPress is known for their blogging system. But over the years, people realized, oh wait, WordPress is actually a CMS. It's a content management system. You can take that and you can make a very, very pretty website. So that's what we're going to be talking about. And then we're going to talk about customizing a theme graphic wise. How do you customize a header? How do you customize ad boxes? How do you add graphics to your WordPress website? And how do you change and edit the graphics? Then we'll talk about editing the pages. As you saw in video number four, where we talked about planning your layout, you know, you remember you had a layout of the home page, the about me page, the testimonials page, the contact page, the products page, and things like that. Those are pages. So in that section, after we customize the graphics, we'll talk about how to edit pages and how to create pages within WordPress. And then, of course, after that, we'll make sure that everything is user friendly both the site and the dashboard. Once that's taken care of, then you can make it even more user friendly if indeed the customer wants to edit and have full control over the website. So with that said, let me move over to the actual computer and show you step by step how to implement this and how to set up your website quickly and easily. So the first thing we want to talk about is getting web hosting. I recommend this site called servint.net. And here's why I recommend them. Over the years since 2003 when I started my business, I had used well over 40 web hosting companies. I went from, you know, HostGator, you know, things like that, and I I owned my own servers and all the all that mess. And I invested thousands and thousands of dollars through web hosting companies only to find that most web hosting companies oversell their servers. Now, what does that mean? Oversell their servers means this. If you think about a server, most hosting companies will put you on a server and you're sharing that server with hundreds or maybe even thousands of people. And if one of those people happens to crash the server, then everybody else on that server, their websites go down. Now, I learned that the hard way when I ran my own web hosting company and I put a lot of people, and I was reselling actually, doing reselling, and reselling from another actual web hosting company. So I was putting people on a website whereas other people on that server were crashing it. So that hurt me and that brought down my website clients sites and of course guess what people were calling me left and right on my cell phone I don't want that for you and luckily over the years I ran into a site called servant.com if you go to servant.net actually it's .net but if you go here and you go under enterprise VPS 
virtual private server is almost like a dedicated server, but you're basically renting out from an actual server. So what servant does is let's say you have a server here. They might put like 50 or so people on a server versus another company might put 100 to 200 to 500 people on that server. So what I found was with Servant, I was able to do heavy, heavy launches, even with a basic, a middle grade account here. So for only $89 a month, I got 75 gigs of storage, but which by the way, they upgraded it, which is fantastic. And it's fast, it's very reliable, and I have yet to have you know a big launch crash. So keeping that in mind, for your client's sake, you want to make sure that you go with a web hosting company that is reliable. And being well, well, with over 40 web hosting companies that have constantly crashed and crashed over the, mo over the months, this place has not crashed in the last two years. So I'm happy to recommend you Servant.net. So learn from my mistakes and don't make the same mistakes that I did. Go with this company. You can go with this, pay $49 a month, and the good thing about Servant is if you increase in size, you can always change to a bigger package without much trouble. So let's say you have 10 people paying you here. You could be making a lot of money, recurring income, that is from this. So this is where I rec recommend that you get your web hosting. Second of all, you need to get a domain name. So I would recommend Namecheap.com. And that's pretty much it. Namecheap has been very good over the years, very good customer support, so I can highly recommend them. So you want to get web hosting, you want to get a domain name, and then you want to point the domain server to your web hosting company. So what do I mean by that? Well, I'm going to take one of my domains here. Let's say this domain here. And basically what is happening here is we're just connecting. All, the, all I meant was we're connecting the two. So we're connecting the hosting account with the domain name. So they're two separate things. It's all going to make sense. So you're connecting your web hosting account. Remember, you can get your web hosting from any company. You don't have to get it from Namecheap and then you buy your domain. So when you go to your Namecheap account, what I want you to do is click on Domain Name Server Setup. Once you're there, then the web hosting account company is going to give you what we call DNS servers. They're going to probably give you two, unless they give you three or whatever, but they're going to give you a DNS server, and what I want you to do is just enter them here. These happen to be mine, they're not yours. So once you're done, you click on Save Changes. And then I can go to that site and start working on it. Once that has been redirected, it can take anywhere from an hour, sometimes a few minutes, but it can take up to 24 hours depending on how fast your web hosting company is. But with Servant, I found that within minutes of pointing it, and having my account set up here, I can do it fairly, fairly quickly. And also keep in mind that you need to create an account for that domain name and your web hosting. Now, I'm not going to explain all of that right now because that information is actually taught here at Servant. So once that's done, then you should have all your information like your FTP, so it would be something like FTP dot this here. And you would have your cPanel information, you would have your username and your password. Now this stuff you would get from your web hosting site. Now it'll all make sense after you've actually gone and set up your web hosting and all that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set up WordPress. So Right now it's about six minutes into this video and I'm going to set up the WordPress and I'm going to show you how to do it within less than a minute or less. So what you want to do now is go to your cPanel. So in this case, 
this is the do domain here and I'm going to put the domain so you want to put your domain put a slash and put cPanel and then click enter then next it's going to ask you to enter your username and password so that's my username and that's my password click login after you have done that then this is the cPanel this basically controls your web hosting panel now what I want to do is scroll all the way to the bottom and click on Fantastico big blue smiley face once I'm in the Fantastico area then I want to click on WordPress so WordPress is here under blogs click on WordPress then you'll see a listing here click on new installation and here we go so it's a three-step installation process in fact it's very very simple to do so it says install location what we want to do is install it on the main site so it says install on domain install on directory this gives you the ability to to install in a specific directory but since we want to do it on robkristenmemories.com let's say this is a wedding photography site then in this case we'll just leave it blank then you want to create your admin password and your password so we'll just say something like admin and we'll put a password here yeah there you go now you need to remember that password then admin nickname, email address, site name, and things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and fill those details out right now. And we'll just put something generic like that. And then you want to make sure you put your email so that you, you know, if you lose your password, it can be sent there. So once you do that, click on install WordPress. Then after that, it says install, install WordPress, step two out of three. And then just confirm finished installation. And that's it. So as you can see on step one, it's pretty much just enter your information and that's it. You can click this information here to send an email with the password and everything here. And that's it. So we have been able to set up WordPress. And as you can see, it's very, very easy to do. So the next thing we need to do is find a theme that fits a site, not a blog. So what I'm going to do is go back here. And I'm going to show you some examples. So if you go to Google, and you type in WordPress themes, you will notice that you can find lots and lots of free WordPress themes. In fact, millions of WordPress themes. But here's our goal. Our goal is not just to find any WordPress theme. Our goal is to find something that does not look like a blog. When I say blog, it looks like this, like this, like that. What we want are professional looking WordPress themes. So where do you get them? Well, there are several sites that I recommend. One site is called WooThemes.com. WooThemes.com provides you with lots of very, very professional looking themes. Installing themes is very, very easy. In fact, it can only take probably less than a minute. So the goal here is to find a theme that you like. WooThemes has a pricing. Now, I believe it's like you pay $125 and you get as many themes as you want. But keep in mind that WooThemes does provide you with free themes as well. So what I'm going to be doing is picking a free theme. As you can see, it's very, very professional. So some of these are free.
And what you could do is you could even showcase the, some of these themes to your clients and let them pick and choose which ones that they like the best. Now let's say you want to take a look at it, you want a demo of it. So if you want a demo, you can click on it and it'll give you the features and everything like that. If you click on demo, it'll open up in a new window and it'll allow you to see the actual website. So as you can see, this kind of looks like a blog, but not really because it's a lot more professional and things like that. So you need to keep in mind, okay, what kind of business am I promoting? Is it a business with a lot of news? If it is like personal training, then it wouldn't hurt to have something like this. Now, if it was a site like a restaurant and it have a lot of news, you probably would not want to go with this design. So since we're doing something on wedding photography, what we might want to do is pick a, another theme. So after looking through the themes, I found one theme called Snapshot. And as you can see, you have your categories here, your layout here, and then you have a bunch of images. And as you can see, we could even use this for a wedding photography business website. So in this case, I'm going to use this here. Now, what next? How do you download it? Well, you can do that very easily. Just go up here, click on purchase. And then as you can see, because it's free, they're going to allow you to download the theme. So click on download this theme. And we'll just go ahead and download this. So once you have downloaded this, I'm going to pause it and open it up. Okay, so I'm going to give the folder and I was able to find the file. It's called snapshot.zip. I unzip that into this folder which is here. So what I'm going to do here is basically drag and drop this and upload this into my site. Now, before I need to do that, I need to connect to my FTP. And to do that, you need to use something like uh, uh, upload FTP program. Now, how do you do that? Well, I would recommend a site called filezilla.com. Well, disregard that. It's actually, it's FileZilla, but it's FileZilla-project.org. So if you go to this site, download the software, and then run it, this is basically a FTP client. FTP allows you to upload files to your website. So now, as you can see, I logged in. I put FTP.RobKristenMemories.com. And I put username RB, RK Foy, and then I put the password. So what that allowed me to do was actually access my site. Now, as you can see here, if I'm looking here, there's a folder called WP content. WP stands for WordPress. So what I want to do is access the WP content and then click on themes. And as you will notice here, you see a theme called 2010. Now, what I want to do is drag my snapshot folder from here to here. So I'm going to do that while it's uploading. I'm going to go log in to WordPress. Now, how do you do that? Well, you recently just created WordPress. So you should have your username and password. Now, from here to now, if you forgot your password, you can always check your email. And they should have emailed your password if you had followed all the directions. So as you can see, I'm about to enter my administrative panel so that I can change everything around. So I'm going to add 
here, click log in. And while that was doing that, as you can see here, I was able to upload this folder. Now this means to us that we can change the theme. So to install the theme, all you have to do is upload that folder and then go to your WordPress administrative dashboard, click on appearance. And remember that we saw that other one is called 2010. Well, if we go here, you'll notice that the current theme is called 2010. So in order to install or activate it, all you have to do is find the available theme. As you can see, we uploaded this just now. Click on activate, and that's it. It's so easy. Now, if you're wondering what the site looks like, you can click on this, and it'll open up the site. And robkristenmemories.com. As you can see, just as we saw and we downloaded, the site. These are pages and I'll show you how to create those pages later. And as you can see here, that was very, very easy to create. So within less than a few minutes, we're creating WordPress. We've already set up, you know, found a theme, installed the theme. Now we're going to customize that theme and getting it ready to go. So as we can see, these are the general settings for WooThemes. You can alternate the color if you like from default to blue to lime fresh. So let's say for example that I wanted to change this from red to blue. So simply saving that, all I have to do is refresh. And within less than two seconds, it changed from red to blue. So as you can see, it's very, very easy to change. Now, let's say you want have a custom logo. You want to replace this with something else. You can do that if you want, but all you have to do is upload the image here. If you want Google Analytics, remember I talked about you providing website tracking for the customer. All you have to do is set up a Google Analytics account for them in your Google Analytics page, enter the tracking here, and within minutes, you're done. You can enter the RSS URL, but you don't need to do that for now. So when you're done, click on Save All Changes. Click on Layout Settings. This allows you to select whether you are using this as a showcase of your own photos or a gallery of other designs. So you could do photos or you could do galleries. If you don't know the difference, you can choose a gallery, click on Save All Changes, and just see what it does. So we clicked on Theme Options. We can click on Framework Settings. So this, this theme here allows you to do a lot more than just designs. It allows you to disable the By Themes tab. You can generate meta tags, you can do branding, you can do you can import options, you can export options, and things like that. Now this theme also offers SEO. So you could do your page title, you could do meta tags, description tags, keyword meta tags. Now one thing to mention here is this. If you name a title, you want to make sure that a specific keyword you want to rank on is here inside the title. Whatever the keyword, main keyword you use, here's just a tip. Whatever main keyword you use needs to be also in that description here and also needs to be in the keyword listing here. So as you can see, SEO-wise, meta tag, title tags, and all that, this theme already takes care of that. But I'm going to show you in the next video on how to increase that and make it a lot better. So in this piece here, you can change your sidebar manager.
and you can do custom navigation you can update the framework and you can do a lot more with this so you can really customize this if you like to now some themes allow you to go ahead and create pages directly from the theme editor and sometimes you have to click on pages and edit from that point too which brings us to the next part we're going to talk about how to edit pages so editing pages is very easy all you have to do is click on pages and if we go to the main site you'll notice that there is an extra page it's called about so let's add a new page let's call it maybe we'll have we'll make the home page with all the graphics and stuff the about me page of course is about the company Rob and we can have a testimonials page so we'll call that testimonials it says add additional SEO blah 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 now if you don't want people to like the search engines to index your page which I don't know why you want it unless you know you were having common stuff but anyways disregard that we're just gonna do this and that's it so once you've done that you click on publish and we'll wait a few seconds and then we'll go to this page and then refresh it once it's done it and as you can see we already were able to create an extra page called testimonials of course that page should be blank because we have nothing on that page but if we were to add to that page we could do that so we could say we could put a testimonial video one testimonial text two you know things like that so if you were to add testimonials here click on update when you're ready and when that's done updating, we can go here and click on refresh. You'll notice that the information is here. So that's all about editing pages. And if you want to edit the page, you can, you, know, you can bold it, you can highlight it, you can make it into a hyperlink, you can add media. As you can see, WordPress is already very, very user friendly in terms of you know, adding different types of files now let's say you you're done with everything you've added images you've done everything you've added pages you've added content now it's time to make sure that everything is user friendly so to do that I mean everything is user friendly already but you just want to make sure that everything is clean everything looks nice and that's it and the reason why I explained that you should install your own plugins and things like that right now is that you understand the whole process if you understand the whole process then it all makes sense when you sell it now that you have actually experienced it it'll make a lot more sense to you and it'll make more sense to the customer when you explain it the power of doing it is very very powerful now before we move on I want to make sure everything is user-friendly the dashboard and everything so when you install WordPress generally what happens is they by default install a bunch of stuff for example links we don't want any of these links so we're going to delete click the button at the top and click delete and apply and click on posts wait for that to load so right now at the front page it says hello world so we want to delete that so we click that move to trash and apply we go to categories we do the same thing we delete the uncategorized category we go to comments section 
there's no comments. We go to the settings section. We go through, make sure everything looks good. If everything looks good, and you're good to go, then great. Congratulations, you are done creating a WordPress website. Not a WordPress blog, but a WordPress website that you can actually set up yourself and that you can actually set up to sell. So as you can see, within less than 30 minutes, we were able to go from scratch to finish. And with this knowledge that you have now, you can go out and create websites within less than a few hours. Less than four hours, probably anywhere from an hour to four hours. And guess what? That right there was you know $1,500 to $2,000 work.